Wormholes, particle physics, extra dimensions. Are the wonders of so-called reality really what they appear to be? Or do we exist in an elaborate hologram? Is our universe the result of random activity or the result of intelligent design? If a creator was involved, can we discover him through our perception of divine order? This is Into the Multiverse with Josh Peck. Welcome to part two of our one year anniversary here at uh, Into the Multiverse. Uh, we tried to pack everything else in, we tried to pack everything into the first episode, but didn't have enough time. Uh, so we just decided to do a two part kind of deal here, which usually I don't like to do, but for you guys, I figured we could. But uh, so uh, with me in studio is always my lovely, beautiful wife, Christina Peck. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm still here. Yep, me too. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> still can't believe it's already been a year. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe it. I went through the whole pregnancy and yeah, was gone for a little while and came yeah. back and yeah. I remember in the first episode, you you were you, you had mentioned that you were pregnant, and yep. I was like, yeah, because well, we were saying that we have two kids, one on the way. Yep, and. Uh, not anymore. Now we have three kids. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, the last, so the last episode we did was Destroyers of the Multiverse, and this is going to be the second part to that. Usually I don't like doing part one and part two, because then if people come across part two, they think they have to watch part one to understand the second one. And it's just always with series uh, like these, uh, the first part gets way more views than the second yeah, one does. Usually. <laughs> so, but you know, in this case, there really was no way around it. So uh, we just decided to own it and go for it. So, yeah, why not? Uh, but this might be somebody's first time viewing the show, and if so, where can they find us online? Okay, well, welcome to Into the Multiverse. It's uh, youtube.com forward slash Into the Multiverse, uh, or you can find us uh, going to the Skywatch TV uh, homepage at skywatchtv.com. There's lots of other news and articles there that are very interesting but if we scroll down you'll find us on the right hand side you can click on it and it brings you right here and if you haven't already go ahead and subscribe to our channel and uh for all sorts of goodies or if you have roku check us out on roku under the skywatch tv channel yes and if you are viewing this on youtube right now we've made it really easy for you to subscribe there's a little subscribe button in the lower corner of your screen just click on that then you'll have all past present and future episodes of into the multiverse and feel free to binge watch them these aren't uh these aren't current event shows they're not shows that are outdated uh every time we do a show we, we try to write it in a way that will be relevant even if you watch it years from now so feel free to binge watch them binge watch all 52 now 53 uh episodes on youtube uh so you can check that out and then we also got some really cool stuff coming this uh this this next year the second year of into the multiverse that so is excited. It, 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 so it is exciting it's it is exciting it's very exciting but it's exclusive to the youtube audience uh so make sure you subscribe so last time just for a quick recap of what we talked about it, it the, the topic is destroyers of the multiverse mm -hmm. the, the, the most destructive forces in god's creation um <laughs> now we're not talking about like uh angels and demons and things like that these are no. these are actual like just objects celestial objects mm -hmm. uh so we talked about uh in the previous episode hypervelocity stars quasars cosmic radiation pulsars and galactic cannibalism which i didn't even know was a thing <laughs> until we were until we were researching for this episode um so that brings us to uh that brings us to Magnetars. Magnetars, number number six in our list here. Magnetars, uh, which is a, a weird name. What, what's a magnetar? It's another name for a neutron star. It's a type of neutron star. Mm -hmm. uh, it's incredibly powerful, um, and it has a... a incredibly powerful magnetic field yeah hence the name magnetar magnet yeah. magnetic star yeah, yeah. magnetic it makes sense uh and to understand how powerful the magnetic field of a magnetar is imagine taking a normal star's magnetic field during a collapsing process and crushing it and crushing it down okay so you have you have a normal star like say our sun or something or just any normal star it collapses, and but every time you do that, you crush down mm -hmm. this magnetic field. So every time you crush it down, you get a stronger field. Yes. It, it strengthens the field. Now imagine that you were crushing this down to something to the size of our sun, or most often larger, uh, uh, crushing something that size down into a, a size of a city, about 15 miles. So similar to a, a pulsar that we looked at earlier. 
But in a magnetar, there's also complex processes that are happening that make the um, that make the magnetic field even stronger than than it would even just by doing that. So the Earth has what's referred to as a one Gauss magnetic field. So our magnetic field is the strength of one Gauss. You know, mm -hmm. that's how we measure. It's a measurement. That's how we measure magnetic fields of celestial objects. Uh, so a Gauss is the name that's given to the increment at which uh, magnetic fields are measured. Now, by comparison, the sun's magnetic field is anywhere from a few to a few hundred mm -hmm. Gauss, depending on where in the surface you're measuring, because it changes depending where you're measuring it. Uh, an MRI runs at about 10,000 Gauss. Mm -hmm. So that, isn't that weird to think about that the magnetic field in an MRI is stronger, stronger. than the sun? <laughs> and the Earth. And the Earth, yeah. That's weird. It is weird. Now, the strongest human-made magnetic field, something like CERN, uh, the, the Large Hadron Collider, they're a few hundred thousand Gauss, uh, but they never exceed a million Gauss, because at that point, the magnetic field is so strong that it would just uh, wreck, all, wreck the machinery and destroy the ma machinery because of the stress. Hmm. Um, a magnetar, however. So, so for human beings, a million Gauss is about the limit. <laughs> um, a magnetar has the strongest magnetic field of all at one quadrillion Gauss. Wow. Which is That's, unimaginable. Yeah. <laughs> so you have Can't fathom that. million, billion, trillion, quadrillion. That's, that's amazing. That, that, and this is all just within something that's only about 15 miles in diameter. So incredibly compact, incredibly dense. Yeah. Strangely enough, and this is, this, is, this is such a cool, weird quantum thing that happens, any atom that gets close enough to a magnetar, it's actually stretched out into like a, 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 just an unimaginably thin rod. The atom oh, itself wow. is stretched out like that. Wow, Ooh, isn't that weird? That's weird. Um, and uh, this means that normal molecular chemistry is impossible, so you can't have atoms combining with other atoms. I mean, it just destroys everything. Uh, also, uh, these magnetic fields, they can produce huge bursts of high intensity radiation, mm -hmm. uh, which, of course, we, you'd expect. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, think about this. If a human were to get even 600 miles around a magnetar, yeah. Um, the very molecular structure of the human's body would break down. So in essence, the human, the person would dissolve within 600 miles. That is crazy. <laughs> you just, you would just dissolve. Oh my you're, goodness. You're, every particle in your body yeah. would get stretched and it would just, you'd, you're done. Hmm. You're done. Um, so this obviously would also happen to the earth if a magnetar got close enough to the earth. And once again, just like the hypervelocity stars and all these other things, there wouldn't be anything that we could do about mm -hmm. it. Uh, probably wouldn't, probably wouldn't even really see it coming, um, till it was too late because, uh, they, they can mess stuff up at pretty far away. Oh, I'm pretty sure they can. <laughs> uh, so magnetars, they are among the, uh, among some of the most destructive, um, objects in our universe. Uh, so that brings us to number seven is neutron stars. Yes. Neutron stars uh, by themselves and as a whole are immensely powerful and destructive. Yeah. So we've talked about a couple of examples of neutron stars. Neutron right. stars is like a family and there's different, you know, there's different the things. Pulsars, in it. So the pulsars, magnetars. magnetars, those are types of neutron stars. So yeah. what about neutron stars as a, as a whole? Like what's uh they're about 15 miles in diameter mm -hmm. and yet it, they have a 1.4 times the mass of our sun. Okay. Uh, this means that a neutron star is so dense that on Earth, one teaspoon of a neutron star would weigh about a billion tons. Jeez, imagine that. So that, one billion tons in just a teaspoon. I mean, that would just rip through the Earth. <laughs> yeah, that's insane. <laughs> so imagine what 15 miles would, would that, be. Yeah, uh, and, and because of this, uh, they also possess a gravitational field about two... 200 billion. 200 billion. Yeah. Times of that of Earth. Yeah, when I was writing these notes, I put the scientific notation, so that's probably what you were looking I at. I was the, like, yeah, two, two times, times 10, 10 to the 11th, 11th and, power. I, yeah, I understand so it's, it's, now. It's a two, two with 11 zeros after it. Uh, but yeah, imagine that strong of a gravity field if one were to even get close. And usually when we think close, we think like a couple miles. It doesn't even have to be no, that close. It could be way hundred, further yeah, out than hundreds. that. It could really mess up the that gravity. Sense. Like if one were to enter our solar system. <laughs> that would be horrible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> and um, there are different types of neutron stars, mm -hmm. like we like we said, um, and all of which have the potential to be destructive and very dangerous if they get too close. So. Yes, definitely. Uh, well, we have, what, three more? Mm -hmm. Let's go to commercial, and then okay. we'll talk about these last three, because uh, especially the last two are really, really interesting. Oh, yeah. Um, so may, we're, we're going to be talking about not exactly black holes, but something involving black holes. As we said in the first uh, episode, when we put these together, we didn't want to do what every other top 10 list of the most destructive things in the universe does uh, and list off things like black holes or supernovas and, and things like that. It's been done. We wanted to do something a little more unique. So uh, we got some stuff that you probably haven't heard before. It's really exciting. Coming right up after this. I will ascend into heaven. The war began in Eden when the dragon, known as Nakash, lured Adam and Eve into sinning with the lie. Ye shall be as gods. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Soon, humans multiplied upon the earth, and rather than worship God, they fell down at the feet of dragons. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. But it wasn't enough for the dragons. They wanted to do more than just own mankind. They wanted to destroy them, to forever keep them from re-entering the divine council. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. The war raged on where fallen angels descended onto mountaintops, spreading fear and false doctrine. It is a war for the souls of men, and only a savior's blood could change the outcome. I will be like the Most High. Satan and his minions go by many names and wear many faces, but their strategy has always been to imitate God's truth. We call this war for men's minds the Great Inception. Learn the secret history of the spiritual war. Learn the names of the deceivers and what their true aims really are. Learn where they have struck and where they will strike again before it's too late. The Great Inception. We're in the middle of a battlefield surrounded by an enemy that we've been told doesn't even exist. The pagan gods are imaginary, we've been taught, just lifeless blocks of wood and stone. The Great Inception shatters that illusion. It took me two years to pull this information together, research into archaeology, history, ancient languages, to show that the Bible stories you've known since childhood are actually literal accounts of supernatural warfare between God and the rebel gods who decided to reject the authority of their creator. My hope is that after reading The Great Inception, you come away with just one question. Why haven't we heard this in church before? You've been fighting in a war against an enemy you've been told doesn't even exist. Skywatch TV wants to change that to prepare you for the battles ahead. Beginning March 7th, exclusively from Skywatch TV, the Cosmic War Collection finally arrives. Featuring three groundbreaking books, a five-hour DVD, and a seven-hour audio series showing you how real the supernatural War of Kingdoms actually is. Reversing Hermon by acclaimed Bible and ancient language scholar Dr. Michael S. Heiser. And The Great Inception by Skywatch TV's Derek P. Gilbert. You'll learn how Christ's full mission has been misunderstood for 2,000 years. Not only did he come to shed his blood to redeem mankind, Jesus was on a mission to reverse the sin of the angelic watchers who descended on Mount Hermon. You'll also discover how Bible stories you've known since childhood were literal battles in the spirit realm between God and the gods who rebelled. When you order the Cosmic War Collection from Skywatch TV, you'll receive Reversing Hermon by Dr. Michael S. Heiser, The Great Inception by Derek P. Gilbert, a new, exclusive, never-before-offered deluxe hardcover collector's edition of the Book of Enoch. 
The Real Clash of the Titans DVD, a special never before released video compilation with five hours of teaching on the long war between God and the gods. And The Unseen Adversary, a brand new audio series on MP3 disc with seven hours of Derek P. Gilbert interviewing Dr. Michael Heiser on The Watchers, UFOs, and The Great Cosmic Rebellion of Satanic Forces. A value of more than $100, yours for just $29.95. The Cosmic War Collection, available beginning March 7th only from Skywatch TV. Know your enemy, order the Cosmic War Collection beginning March 7th by calling 844-750-4985 or log on to skywatchtvstore.com. Welcome back to Into the Multiverse. Again, if you haven't had a chance to do so, or if you're just joining us now, we have made subscribing to us so easy. It is free. All you have to do is just click on the subscribe button in the lower corner of your screen, and you are subscribed, and you'll want to be, because we have some really exciting stuff coming up. Uh, so we're continuing this, this two-part episode to commemorate our first year of Into the Multiverse, and the first episode we did was just what is the multiverse, and so for our first year we thought, well... Hey, what could destroy the unit? What, what could destroy the multiverse? <laughs> <laughs> so many things. A lot of things. Really, a lot of things <laughs> has destructive. Uh, I was only able to find one thing that actually had the potential to destroy the entire multiverse. Uh -huh. But um, there are a lot of destructive uh, forces uh, throughout the universe mm -hmm. and, and things like that. The next one. Well, I'll let you take it. What's the next one? Colliding black holes. <laughs> Number eight. Colliding Number black eight. holes in, in our list of increasingly destructive things in the universe. <laughs> right. And this is not to be confused with the um, galactic... Uh, cannibalism that we talked about. Yeah, we talked about that in the last episode, and um, just a quick review on that, galactic cannibalism is when a larger galaxy absorbs a smaller galaxy, mm -hmm. which is still pretty destructive, <laughs> but nowhere even close to this. No, no, <laughs> not at all. Uh, it's an actual collision of black holes, Yeah, and it can be far more destructive, mm -hmm. and uh, the process entails two black holes colliding, and it is so violent that computer models can't even keep up with they can't the even, yeah, they can't even keep up with the carnage. Uh, scientists cannot fully understand all of the implications of two black holes colliding because uh, the computer models can't keep up with it. The, right. the, 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 um, they can't, they're not able to simulate it properly. You know, they, they, they have simulations of it, but not that can take all of the chaos into effect. That's a lot of chaoticness mm -hmm. going on. That's not even a word. Chaoticness? What? That's fine. Chaoticness <laughs> is fine. <laughs> I'm chaos, making up my own chaoticness. Words. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> it's very chaotic. Yeah. Ness. Christina Peck is one of the most destructive forces of the English language. <laughs> I am. I like to make up my own stuff. <laughs> hey, it works. It works. It's my thing. But yeah, it's weird to think about that. It's so destructive that scientists can't even get, like, really get their heads around it. But we do know that a collision of black holes would produce a tremendous amount of energy, um, uh, but would it would send massive gravitational waves uh, throughout the fabric of space time in the universe. And mm -hmm. that, that's actually what was um, detected at LIGO last year, back in 2016, that gravitational waves for the first time uh, were detected because they're so powerful that somewhere out in the universe, two black holes collided however long ago, or you know however that works, and we were able to de detect, detect the waves. That was in September of uh, 2015. They they discovered it, but they didn't release it until right. earlier um, right. last year. Now, here's the eerie thing about this. Um, colliding black holes, we would naturally think that something like that would just be this massive explosion of light and stuff flying out all over the place. And, you know, it would <laughs> just so be... so violent. Y we would think of that, but it's, it's actually not. Mm -hmm. It's completely silent, yeah. completely dark. Nothing explodes anywhere because nothing can escape that's, a black hole. That's right. Yet this has so much... Uh, energy to it the only the only thing that really produces out of it are these massive gravity waves because mm -hmm. you're adding one black hole to another so that's like way more gravity than what you had starting off with way more than yeah. you i would ever need so they're totally <laughs> dark ridiculous yeah they're totally dark and silent you can't see it there's nope. no way to even see this happening um there's no radiation no light no particles nothing uh the only thing caused are those gravitational waves so um and 
uh, those gravitational waves can be detected from more than a billion light years away, which is it's quite a long ways. Uh, crazy to think about. Um, now, if black holes themselves are destructive, imagine how destructive two of them merging with one another, you know, would be. Uh, so that's crazy to think about. So that's pretty destructive. But there's something that could destroy the entire universe. And what, what is that? Because black hole collisions are pretty bad, but they're nowhere near well, this next one. Well, number nine, vacuum metastability event. Yeah, this is crazy. And this is actually something that we have talked about on the show, but we used the more approachable term, Higgs Field Doomsday. Yes, Higgs Field <laughs> yeah. Doomsday. Uh, now, vacuum metastability event, that's just a fancy term that uh, represents something that has the potential to destroy the entire universe. Multiverse. Uh, yeah, well, not multi, well... I guess if it happened in all universes at once, it could, but we're, we're this is just on the universe. The multiverse ah, is the next one. Oh, <laughs> um, never mind. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it could. We don't know enough about how hyperspace works to know if mm -hmm. something like this would damage the multiverse as a whole, but definitely our universe would be done for. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's true. It would be done for. So um, uh, it would destroy the u universe on a quantum scale all over the universe. It's called, uh, it's also called the Higgs field doomsday. Mm -hmm. uh, physicist Joe Licken did a, uh, an amazing presentation that people can find on YouTube. Uh, just look up Joe Licken, L-Y-K-K-E-N, Higgs field doomsday and uh, watch that presentation because it's, it's, it's fantastic. Um, but we have also covered this on this show. We, yes, we did a whole we show have. on it. Uh, I also wrote about it in Abaddon Ascending, which uh, was I co-authored with uh, Tom Horn. I wrote about how this actually might be something that God uses to renew everything in the in the future. There there might actually be Bible verses to support this happening in the future. But basically. Um, so the Higgs field, and we keep saying this, we're going to have to do a whole episode on the Higgs field yeah, someday. The Higgs field. <laughs> but basically, um, uh, the Higgs field is something that permeates all space in the universe. It's everywhere. It's just everywhere. And when something like a particle interacts with it, that particle picks up mass. Uh, so a, a particle doesn't have mass unless it interacts with the Higgs field. That's actually what mass is. Mm -hmm. It's an interaction with the Higgs field. The only reason we have mass is because we're interacting, interacting with, with the Higgs field yeah, at all times. Um, so something like a photon, a particle of light, it doesn't interact at all with the Higgs field, and that's why it's massless. That's mm -hmm. why it can travel at the speed of light, you know, the, the universe's top speed. Um, so if a particle interacts more with the Higgs field than another particle, it's more massive. Uh, so that, that's basically what the Higgs field is. But there's a theory within f physics that states um, that the Higgs field has the potential to be at a higher energy than it is now. So right now it's like at this baseline energy of, I, I think it's like 250 some odd, 200 some odd, um, giga something. I don't, I don't know the exact, <laughs> I, I, have it, I have it in the book. If people get Abaddon ascending, they'll see it there. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, <laughs> so it's at a certain level and all it would take, it, it's, a, it's such a fragile system that all it would take is a, a, a weird little quantum fluctuation somewhere to set it all off balance. Mm -hmm. And what would happen is the Higgs field would energize. Um, it's kind of uh, uh, an analogy I use in the book is you think of um, Think of a ball at the base of a very small hill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and then on the other end of that hill is a, a cliff, cliff careening down. Now, as long as there's no wind, you know, everything's fine. But the second just the smallest gust of wind comes and over. blows the ball over the hill, then it goes careening down the cliff. And it wants to. <laughs> and it wants to that, and because of the gravity. But that's that's like the Higgs field. It mm -hmm. wants to be at this higher, yes. you know, this higher, uh, there's a fancy term for it, but this, this higher energy, it on basically. A early, uh, on an earlier episode yeah. about it. But yeah, yeah, it, it, and it wants to be. It doesn't want to be held back. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's kind of straining at this, the level that it's at now mm -hmm. but if this were to happen if the universe gets its way <laughs> <laughs> i like that if this were to happen what would happen is uh it would start off somewhere in the universe uh there would be some weird quantum fluctuation thing and all of a sudden the higgs field would get switched on in that localized point and that would spread so you would have this bubble of higher energy Higgs field that would expand at the speed of light all across the universe. Mm -hmm. So this could have already happened and we wouldn't know it until it hit us because you can't see it. Right. But everything within that bubble, all the particles would become so massive that they would become black holes. Mm. <laughs> so you would have miniature black hole collisions <laughs> all over the place. 
Because, I mean, every particle that makes up reality would become a black hole. So everything on this list be occurring. Yeah. Well, yeah, basically. It, it would become, it, you would have black holes merging into other black holes, making bigger black holes. Mm -hmm. Eventually, the entire universe would essentially be, be a black hole. It would be one giant black hole. It'd be called, it would be what physics calls the true vacuum. Because mm -hmm. right now, the universe is not a true vacuum. No. Um, it's a vacuum, but there's, right. it's not a true vacuum. There's still virtual particles. So it would become the true vacuum. Nothing could survive that, mm -hmm. you know, nothing, there would be no particles anymore. They would just be black holes. Uh, so, uh, and, and if people want more information on that, I do write about that in Abaddon Ascending. We got two minutes left and I definitely want to get to this next one. The final one is brain collision. This is the <laughs> destruction of the multiverse yes. because it is a thought that if there are more than one universe, mm -hmm. we are on thin membranes. Yeah. Or for short, brains. Brain, yeah. That's so right. not like brains in your head, but brain is in B-R-A-N-E. <laughs> yes. And if you were to touch, it would just essentially destroy. Yeah, and, and it depends everything. on what it's made out of. Because uh, you could think of... You could think of the multiverse, and I used this example in the very first episode that we did, but you could think of it as like a stack of paper. Mm -hmm. And every sheet of paper is one universe. Now you could think of the words that are printed on the paper as like the substance that the universe is made out of. Uh, so matter, you could mm -hmm. think of it. Yeah. And they're, they're attached to the paper or to the brains. Uh, and then you have these layers. So these brains kind of float freely sort of in hyperspace or what's called the bulk. Yes. Um, and what could happen and what's thought it's at least possible is if these brains collide, actually the, the energy is so strong in something like this that scientists and, and we as Christians don't believe that this is the proper uh, model of creation, but, yes. but they believe that it was actually the, the, the smashing together of two brains that caused the that, big bang. That caused and the then big bang here and, and, we and, are. Yeah. And of course we don't believe that, but <laughs> no. that, that shows how, how powerful something like that could be. Now, if you have our universe made of normal matter, and then you have another universe on another brain made solely of antimatter, mm -hmm. if those were to come into contact, they would annihilate. Yes. <laughs> Yep. Because right now there, there's this baryon asymmetry problem, which it's just a fancy term that means um, our universe is made more of matter than antimatter. Uh, and there's really no reason why it just is. So it would stand to reason there could be other universes made of antimatter and not matter. So yeah. if they collide. So basically these collisions could cause so much mayhem that mm -hmm. it could cause collapses all over throughout the multiverse and bring the whole thing crashing down. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oops. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> multiverse is all gone. Uh, so that's. That's basically that. So uh, that could happen on a multiversal scale destruction yes. like that. And, you know, when God decides to restore everything, there's going to at some time be a new heaven, a new earth. You know, we don't know the full extent of all that, but maybe something like that. Maybe he'll use a process like that. That's Who knows? pretty interesting <laughs> to think about. Yeah. It's very cool. Well, it's a... Uh, it's, it's a good note to end on, a very destructive note to end on. <laughs> the complete so sleep well tonight. Yeah, and <laughs> the complete undoing of all reality and time. <laughs> we want to thank you all so much for joining us. This past year has been amazing, and we are really excited to see what the next year and years beyond uh, have in store. So thank you all so much for joining us yet again into the multiverse. Until next time, for Christina Peck, I am your host, Josh Peck. As always, take care and God bless.